So uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Debisri Panda, and I'm the CEO of iMesh. Uh, I have two years of experience in product marketing and product management of open source technologies. Uh, I'll be your host uh, for today, and the topic uh, is securing multi-cloud microservices with Istio. The speaker of this topic is Pulak Das. He is an Istio and Envoy expert. Pulak has near about five years of experience in developing applications in cloud and containers. Um, unfortunately, uh, Pulak is uh, not doing well, so I'll be doing most of the talking, uh, where Pulak will provide the demonstration of Istio. Uh, uh, now, a bit of housekeeping rules. Um, this uh, webinar is getting recorded, so we'll send you, in case you miss it, uh, you know, uh, in between, we'll send you the recording after this webinar is over. Uh, and during this webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll take them at the end of the webinar. And in case we miss uh, answering certain questions because, because of time constraint, then uh, please write your questions to us at contact at the ims.ai. All right, so uh, uh, let's begin uh, uh, briefly about us. Uh, we uh, formed um, uh, iMesh in 2023. Basically, we went out of the steel mode. Um, we have, uh, we uh, Our headquarters is at Dover, US, but we have an office at Bangalore, India. We started iMesh with a simple mission to simplify and secure the complicated network of microservices in the cloud. Uh, as of today, uh, we have two offerings. The first one is enterprise Istio support, and we also provide IMS Istio dashboard. It's a proprietary tool which helps uh, you know companies to get the visibility into the traffic across between the services across clusters and across uh, clouds. All right. So the agenda for this call, uh, for this you know, webinar, will be uh, to discuss about the growing network and security challenges with multi-cloud microservices. Then we'll discuss a little bit on how Istio helps, you know, uh, you know, can help solving these challenges. Uh, we'll briefly touch upon the architecture and the features of Istio. Um, Pulak, uh, who is also in this uh, you know, webinar, will uh, take us through a demonstration how you can uh, secure uh, the communication between do microservices using MTLS um, by, by deploying Istio. Um, so, uh, and uh, before uh, uh, wrapping up this call, I'll also talk about a case study, uh, how a big application uh, company, SaaS-based application company is using Istio and they're getting, uh, uh, you know, a lot of values uh, to make their microservices manageable and secure. Um, all right. So let me start with a simple example of uh, today's uh, application. Since every uh, company are trying to uh, cater to their customers using online applications, and their applications are mostly uh, based on microservices. If not, then uh, if they're not built in microservices, they would break all the traditional monolithic into small, small microservices. So let us take an example of a sample taxi aggregator uh, no, company. So uh, a simple and sample architecture would look something like this, uh, where there are small microservices developed by individual teams. For example, uh, you know, a uh, uh, for passenger to interact with the mobile application and book a cab, there will be a passenger management service. Then there is a driver management service, which will take that order and find and locate a driver which is near to that area and uh, allocate that order to the driver. Then similarly, there are other services like billing, payments, notification, etc., which are developed by small, small teams um, in the form of microservices. Now, uh, the pattern of these microservices are these are developed uh, and deployed into uh, different clouds or at least in different clusters. And they all talk to each other using uh, REST API calls. Now, this uh, uh, you know microservices pattern uh, is quite good for scale and uh, agility because everything can be developed uh, in their own terms. Um, they are quite distributed and they're quite independent uh, in their own terms. Uh, but also, it uh, kind of uh, introduce some network and uh, security challenges. Now, if you look at the data, since the data is no more in, in the uh, you know, boundary, it is kind of getting uh, across your boundaries and uh, for you know um, uh, in, uh, where the one service is talking to each other, 
there are certain challenges like uh, your firewalls will not be enough and uh, the security securing your data in transit is getting you know complicated with time when there are more and more microservices um, another peculiar thing that we have observed while discussing with our you know, clients is that uh, compliance uh, whenever they have to you kind know, of comply with uh, rules like gdpr or uh, soc soc 2 compliance there is no central plane where they can invoke uh, the security policies directly because if you see this you know all the services are getting developed in silos and every you know developers or or the developing uh, team would be developing security policies for their services and uh, then the question arises who is the person responsible for uh, ensuring the security of the entire application so that's that's uh, a, a one of the you know challenge every company today uh, face how to comply uh, ensure they are adhering to the uh, compliance uh then there are also network challenges if you see there are number the number of microservices the number of apis the number of ingress controllers all these infrastructures are increasing they are distributed and they are increasing and the manageability of it is becoming quite complex uh, for example uh it needs a lot of effort to uh, ensure the traffic is get, getting split uh, properly in uh, among the all the services number one second thing is even if you have to update a particular service or maybe apis that also becomes quite challenging the um uh, one of the most important uh, problem that sres site reliability engineers or operation team uh, face is visibility now since you know the, the network is can spread out it is quite uh, difficult for ops team to identify uh, or troubleshoot network issues so with uh, you know uh, microservices what it used to take near about 4 uh, to 5 hours to solve in network incidents now it almost takes you know uh, sometime in a day or two days just to identify where the issue lies so the visibility poor visibility of the network is one of the uh, challenge uh, with the microservices and multi cloud application now to solve all this problem uh, istio was launched so uh, istio is an so for those of you who do not know or now not have not heard about istio it's an open source service mesh software which abstracts the security and network layer from the business logic so that developer team can continue to focus on writing the uh, you know business core business logic they can focus on application uh, and the security and network layer are abstracted out and can be man managed from a central plane um so the uh, so the way is to does this or solve this problem is by injecting um, a sidecar proxy it's called onway proxy which is a kind of uh, uh, which is meant to handle the l4 and l7 you know, uh, uh, traffic uh, both at the edge and uh, you know for all the services across the cloud now it pro is to provide a control plane which would you know control all the sidecars uh, and it will control the uh, security and the network aspects of it and also it provides the visibility into your uh, uh, traffic so uh, there are three uh, no istio is quite loaded with uh, features it's heavyweight uh, but there are three important features uh, first one is security where it helps um, you know uh, uh, with stronger identity with mtls uh, istio helps in encrypting the data between uh you know in in the communication between two services and using certificates uh the third one is istio ensures that you are uh, implementing zero trust uh, zero trust is a uh, by the way new philosophy where uh, you do not provide um uh, uh, or you do not uh, trust any uh, sources blindly so uh, it it helps you implement this philosophy of zero trust in your network uh, and your applications using authentication and authentication uh, and authorization on the policies the uh, second feature is network um istio provides advanced you know load balancing features um it provides uh, traffic management splitting and shaping uh, functionalities uh, uh, such as retries failovers uh, circuit breakers etc um it also provides in you know, a fault injection for for you know chaos engineering if you want to kind of uh, uh, inject fault into your production system and to test you know how resilient your system is 
uh, you can do that using Istio. Um, the third most important feature uh, for, especially this is for uh, site reliability and uh, you know, the, the, uh, production uh, maintenance or support guys, uh, observability. Now, Istio, since it understands or it handles all the traffic uh, among all the services and at the edge, so it provides you granular visibility into your traffic. It provides you log metrics and traces um, and also, you know, uh, uh, of, of all the components. Um, so that that's one. And second thing is also provides uh, the service dependency or the topology graph. You know, how, you know, different services are interrelated to each other. So one, do not um, a person do not have to log into the CLI and just uh, put commands to uh, uh, see what are the implications if one service goes down and how other cascading services will get in, impacted. So all these things, uh, you know, topology, uh, UI uh, you know, topology will quite, you know, is very, very helpful for troubleshooting. Now we'll go and you know move into the demonstration uh, where Pulak will uh, provide us the um, idea in how you one can uh, implement Istio uh, and inject sidecar into the pods, um, and eventually you know you can enable MTLS to secure communication with Istio. Now there are two prerequisites. One has to ensure there is a Kubernetes cluster, and they they need to have Istio installed already. Uh, we, we we are not going to kind of showcase all these things, you know. Um, so we will directly uh, start with our demonstration by assumption that someone would have a Kubernetes cluster and they would have installed Istio already. Um, now, uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, um, webinar, uh, you know, it says that security for multi-cloud. Uh, so if the time you know, uh, permits, then we'll go into the uh, multi-cloud. Uh, otherwise, our intention is to uh, kind of uh, make another, another part on the, another series of this webinar where we'll showcase a multi-cloud or multi-cluster communication with Istio. It's quite an you know, elaborate and uh, very detailed topic. So today we'll just uh, limit ourselves into uh, uh, enabling MTLS and we'll showcase how the encryption uh, works. And then in the next series, um, we'll kind of uh, discuss about the multi-cluster uh, communication. Uh, but if you want to learn about multi-cluster and multi-cloud by this uh, end of this week, please feel free to reach out to us. All right. So, uh, Pulak, um, I'll just uh, hand over this to you so that yeah. um, you can show the demonstra demonstrate. Great. Let me share. Yeah, I guess everything is visible now. Yes, it's visible. Okay, so for this demo, we'll be going over a pretty simple sort of setup. Let me draw this out. Okay, so we'll be creating three namespaces here. So let me draw them. This one will be a bit wide here. And for the first namespace, we'll call it demo one. The second one will be called demo two. The third one will be our insecure instance, so we'll call it unsecured. Right. And for each of these, for these two, for demo one and demo two, we'll be deploying a simple sort of application. One is HTTP bin, which is used for testing networks and all that. This will be our HTTP bin server. Same over here, and there will also be a sleep command running so we can use curl to talk to the HTTP service so this will be running in all three of these interfaces right so normally without istio uh, if you want to talk to for example let's say this slip service will be talking to this HTTP bin server this will go directly here and same for across uh, our namespaces as well right but because we have istio enabled we will have a small sort of proxy sitting at for each of the um, like uh, ports and services. Oh, sorry. Yes.
So usually where your connection would go from sleep to HTTP, now it will first go to this proxy. And from the proxy, we'll again, I can go over to the target proxy. From there, from the target proxy, it will go to the actual target, right? And so this sort of redirection will be enabled. And so for the MTLS demo, what you'll be seeing is that even though the main connection, so from sleep to HTTP, even though we are doing it over an insecure uh, without TLS uh, connection, the actual uh, proxies will uh, will be inserting TLS, and we'll see how to uh, how that is handled basically, right? And so we'll start by call. We'll start by making connections from sleep to all all the sleeps to all the HTTP bins, and also how that works. So let me move this over. Okay, so first of all, let's create our namespaces. Demo one. So. Three namespaces created. Now we'll be inserting um, the HTTP bin and uh, its sleep ports basically. Let's see. And for this one, so what you want to do is for demo one and demo two, we'll be inserting Istio's proxies directly. Uh, normally, we would use something like we'll be using the labeling method, but for this one, we'll be using uh, inject directly. For the unsecure one, we'll just be applying the, we'll be we'll be de deploying sleep directly. So no no need to worry about that thing. Inject. We'll go to demo one. Same thing for demo two. Now for the sleep containers, watch demo one. Oh, no. This will sleep dot yandel. Okay. Same for demo two. And now for the final unsecured one, we will directly insert it. We need to inject keep still into that. Okay, so before we begin, let me open another tunnel actually. Right, bring it over here. Right, so what we'll be doing, we'll first uh, enter the. Okay, so we'll be entering the HTTP bins uh, proxies basically. So along with this, let me check first. Let me see. Let's see here, look at ports. Okay, so you can see for demo one and also for demo two, it will say that there will be two containers running. One of them is the actual HTTP bin or sleep uh, container, and the other one is the proxy. But for the unsecured one, since we have not injected anything here, we're just directly doing it. Only the sleep container is running. So what we'll be doing, we'll be entering the HTTP bin uh, proxy, not the proxy container, not the actual HTTP bin container. And here we'll be listening to all the TCP traffic. So I can show how that works. Let me. If you're following along at home, uh, just keep in mind that this will not work unless you have enabled a certain flag at uh, during install time. Because mm -hmm. by default, uh, Istio does not allow you to get uh, root access to the proxy containers. So let's go to demo one. And because the pods are randomly named, we need to get it from kubectl again. So let's get it kubectl pod demo one. And we check for app because it's to be pin. We want the JSON from this one will be taking out. So that's one path. Items dot dot data data. Dot name. So this will give us the name for the demo one HTTP bin pod. And now what we want to exec into that. 
will be executing into the container that is HTO proxy. And the actual command we want to run inside it is sudo tcp dump port 80. Let's say to view everything. Let's give it a second. Okay, now it is listening. And if we use the click curl command now, we can type in. Okay. Now for this one, there will be a bit of uh, like bash uh, scripting for, for this. I don't want to write the same command over and over again. So let's do this in this simple way. So we'll do for from. So from is our variable name here. And we'll do demo one, demo two, and demo unsecured. Right. Now we'll loop again. So for, and the second variable will be two in demo one and demo two only because we don't have the HTTP in the unsecured um, like namespace. Excuse me, we'll do. And now the actual command to run. So again, we will be executing into the sleep container. So exec and to fetch the container name and to include it here, wait for SL equals sleep. Uh, namespace will be, so namespace will be from here. And we want the name from the container. So in some part equals dot items dot 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 name. Close that there. And then we want to go into the sleep container. And the name is this from. Okay. And now the actual command to run inside the sleep container is call. HTTP. So we're not using HTTPS here. Uh, HTTP then, and then we yes. So this will be the path for the the URL. So using the DNS from uh, Kubernetes, we'll be connecting to it over the port 8000 plus IP. So we'll we'll give the dashes. So it will not uh, and print out a lot of stuff here. So that's this, and then so that is silent mode. Any output that is coming out, so go to slash tab slash null because we don't want to see it. And will be uh, what the output that we want will be in this format. So sleep dot which container it's coming from to HTTP pin dot which container it is going to, and what is this status code? So percent is then HTTP. Pin. That's good. And I guess that's the whole command done. Now we'll just finish up the loops. So done and then done again. So again, you see HTTP bin demo one got cut and our DCP uh, dump has started printing stuff and we're going over that. So what this uh, what this entire thing will do is it will loop over everything and start. So the sleep from demo one will talk to the HTTP in from demo one and demo two. Same for sleep for demo two and same for the demo one secure. Right. So you can see all of them have passed successfully. Now if you look at the the whole mess that it has generated, um, so this is pattern here. It's a bit difficult to figure out, but for every for every time this connects to demo one, so these three basically, right. Once of connections will be made, and it is printing out the uh, like the details of the connection here, and then what the actual connection is passing through. So you can see when demo one is talking to the HTTP bin from uh, did I did I write HTTP bin? Yeah. So when it's talking to the uh, HTTP bin here, you can see that it is encrypted. Same encrypted. You're getting this over and over again. All of this has been encrypted. But there will be one of them only. Let me look for it. This. Yeah, so here you can see. So sleep from the demo unsecured. When it is talking to HTTP, bin, we are getting the curl header agent completely in plain text. So this is the unsecured one. And there will be some more as well. So again, from unsecured, it is, it is Going from HTTP, so that it responds from HTTP bin to the sleep container in the unsecured one is also in a, um, like unsecured mode. 
right so now what we can do if we go on to the project directory so i miss now what we'll do we'll force enable mtls right so this is the the ml file for that all we're doing is creating a peer authentication policy and we're setting mtls to strict i'll be applying this just for the demo uh, unsecured phase basically right. okay so if it's ctl apply the self strict mtls secure Let's give it a second for the uh, like the policy to propagate, and then we'll clear this out. Let me actually create a new terminal so it's easier to read. So let me command this one. Okay, it's listening again. Now for the for loop to run again. So now what will happen? Yeah, this is the for loop. Previously everything was passing through, but now this one will break at least. Yes, so you can see that it failed. Oh no, did I? I think I must have made a mistake. Let me check again. QCTL. Ah, okay. Did make a mistake. There's nothing there. That's not right. Yes, so that I made a mistake. I should have put it in the demo one only. So now you can see that. So when it's stop, trying to talk to demo one, it will fail, but everything else is going through fine. And again, you can see in the TCP dump here, we're not getting a single you know, like a unsecured one. So this one is from the previous one where I had accidentally entered the unsecured one by the mistake. So the actual command will be starting somewhere. Okay, it's a bit difficult to get through, but yes. And yeah, so I think that's it for the demo side of things. Um, so if you want to, again, like I mentioned, the TCP dump command will not be working properly unless you have set it up properly. So what you need to do is while using Istio CTL, you use install or upgrade, and then you pass set values dot global dot proxy to the list equals to you set it up like this and i cannot show that currently because uh, i'm on the uh, on our uh, team cluster right now right so back to the best three stop video oh no stop setting yeah the best three. you can take back again all right let me share my screen. So, all right. So, uh, thanks, Pulak. Uh, uh, so, thanks for the demonstration. Um, now, I'll just uh, quickly um, discuss about uh, a one case study, Splunk. As we all know, Splunk is an application leader uh, in uh, providing monitoring and logging solutions. So they have their uh, product called Splunk Cloud, which is a SaaS application, and uh, it is spread across AWS and GCP. It has near about 35 Kubernetes cluster, and there are multiple services. 
uh, it has to manage. Now, uh, Splunk was facing certain challenges to ensure everything has to be secured, all the traffic has to be secured, the manageability should be uh, should increase. The developer should not feel overwhelmed while maintaining the security and network challenges uh, where they're supposed to uh, develop the services. Uh, so all these things are there. They uh, initially they kind of uh, um, um, uh, thought of applying NGNX and other uh, API uh, solutions, which was not enough. Uh, so they gradually moved into Istio. Uh, so they finalized Istio, they applied, implemented Istio, uh, and uh, they uh, they implemented MPLS for all the you know uh, service to service communication and edge to you know, cloud or you know the cluster communication. Um, now they uh, Splunk had their own uh, authentication provider, and Istio since they used open source Istio and it's a built in a such a way that it is Istio is quite extensible. They could quickly integrate with their own uh, authentication provider and quota provider, uh, and they can uh, they could in I think three to four months they could kind of ensure the security of the network is uh, top notch. So they improved the security posture. Uh, now. Uh, Splunk, you know, all the developers that uh, who who were responsible for uh, ensuring security and also looking into the uh, network components of it, like virtual services, DNS, etc. Uh, you know, those things are completely abstracted from a developer's uh, uh, you know work item. That's one. And the second thing is now with uh, you know visibility into the traffic, they get um, a very strong manageability into a multi-cluster. Uh, and also, uh, their ops team can troubleshoot uh, if there are some negative incidents. They are quickly reacting and uh, uh, solving those problems. So, um, you know, yeah. So th those are the kind of some of the uh, values that uh, Splunk would achieve with Istio Service Mesh. Um, all right. So uh, that's it uh, for our webinar, and uh, it's time for uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, kind of drop them in the chat. All right, so I think uh, there is uh, one uh, question. Um, so I think there's one question uh, someone has asked. Uh, let's say if I have another namespace which is not labeled uh, Istio, how will the communication be handled between the pods of Istio and then uh, a non Istio namespace? Kulak, if you can yeah. answer that. Yes, yeah, so by default, Istio will uh, allow both uh, HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So even the unencrypted, unencrypted ones will get through. That's what we were saying before. Um, so the way I applied the uh, like the policy authentication, uh, the peer authentication policy, basically, similar way. Uh, if you set it to strict, it will just straight up uh, force uh, all the uh, traffic to go through the HTTPS or uh, secure channel only, right? And everything else will fail. So that's one way to handle it. Um, and okay. yeah, go on. Yeah, there's w w w one more question uh, we have. Um, you know, I want all the communication at the cluster level. How okay. can Istio help? Yeah, so at that point, uh, this, again, the same, same policy that I had applied, you would apply it to the Istio system namespace. So that is the data plane where Istio's components live. Um, if you apply it there, all of the traffic in the cluster will be forced to use MPLS. Um, cool. Uh, so uh, thank you, Pulak. Uh, so now we'll just uh, uh, wrap our webinar. Uh, you know, first of all, thanks everybody who attended to this webinar. Um, if you have, in case uh, if you have missed, in between, we'll send this recording to you. And in case if you have more questions, please drop us with your question at contact at that ims.ai and we'll you know uh, revert with uh, the answer in maybe in a couple of days so uh, uh, thank you and stay tuned we'll have uh, more uh, webinars very interesting topics around istio uh, for example uh, you know how to do traffic routing how to uh, ensure certificate uh, you know, rotation uh, you know r back and uh, uh, and secret management, um, all these you know advanced concepts will kind of quickly introduce. And uh, in case if you feel that um, you need enterprise support for taking Istio to production, 
or ongoing maintenance support uh, to upgrade and uh, maintain uh, Istio with guaranteed SLA, please drop a message to us. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And we ha have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye.